Welcome to Tales of the Autism and how I actually got diagnosed a little over 10 years ago. Stay tuned and listen, especially you young grasshoppers. Because I was raised in a small town, I was just seen as dotty and a little weird. So once I left the South and went to bigger cities, it was very obvious that um, I was a little different. And that maybe uh, my mathematical abilities being very bad, but my linguistic abilities being good in school might have meant something. So I got diagnosed in college. And other than not being able to find my way around college, like an adult should be able to do, when I saw kids, uh, you know, college kids high-fiving each other, yeah, and all this connection that they had, I felt like an alien. Quite literally wrote a thesis on how I felt like an alien. Therapy, regular cognitive behavioral therapy, turned out to be useless because... Because exposure therapy doesn't happen when it's actually a sensory situation. Our nerves are not quite wired the same way. Our synapses, etc., are not quite wired the same way. So exposing us over and over and over again, it, it doesn't fix thy problem. So I went to a neuropsychologist, not just a therapist, not just a shrink. He was someone who was pretty renowned. I was in college in New York City. And it took weeks of getting a diagnosis, and I finally did. And if I had not, there would have been many situations where I would not have had any accommodations that I really needed. And yet, you know, here we are. And a lot of people do self-diagnose, and I can understand why that happens. But there are situations where that's going to be detrimental. For example, if you get arrested and for... I have gastroparesis, paralyzed stomach. You go to jail and they don't uh, believe you have gastroparesis. They will make you eat. And if you don't, you go to solitary. If you go to the hospital for any type of emergency and you are having a reaction related to autism and you are not officially diagnosed, they're not going to care. Even if you're diagnosed, they're probably not going to care. When I was growing up, I appealed greatly to a lot of very ADHD kids. Uh, I also, all my crushes were on the ADHD boys and girls. And because they would get bullied, I would become their bodyguards. And I do think that can be common in especially female autistics. Uh, it's a little less common in the male autistics, and I find that interesting because it is pretty much assumed that males are more physically aggressive. And in my experience, uh, both of us are, but there is some evidence of high levels of fetal testosterone when uh, autism is involved with females. Ever since I was 19, I have dedicated a lot of my life to advocacy including Autism Speaks, before they change the rhetoric, it's not as bad now, um, calling them during Autism Month. I ran a YouTube channel. Uh, I actually had to step away from that because everyone's problems was becoming my problems and I could feel it. And I'm not even a very empathetic person. I'm like a lug wrench. I've written two books about autism. One is more like a timepiece of how things were at the time. And one is a fictional, all autism characters, you know, that type of thing. Plus all my horror stuff, because that's my special interest. Being autistic as you get older is difficult. It is not cutesy. This isn't cute. Okay. This is weird to other people. To me, I'm just living my life and trying to have fun. That was loud. Even with these on. When you go to the mall, if you still go to these ghost towns, and you see maybe a woman with schizophrenia sitting and talking to herself, and she's got raggedy hair, and 
she's got lines etched into her face, that type of thing. You don't have the same reaction as when you see a little teenage girl bippity boppity bippity boppity with their STEM toys. Now, you see that same lady with the gray hair, the etched face, the mini winters going bippity boppity bippity boppity with their STEM toys and you're gonna have a different reaction. And even if you aren't, society in general is going to have a different reaction. Aging with autism is a thing. And I'm not exactly up there in years, but you think about these things, especially when you're a woman. To be completely transparent, I do have a fear of getting older, you know, getting the lines, getting gray. You know, it's what happens. If you're blessed enough to get old, try to just accept it. A fear of coming off wrong in public, stimming, you know, I do a lot of like playing the air piano, stimming. I'm worried that like, I live in New York right now, mental health checks are a thing. No one talks about aging with autism. They just say, oh, we all die at 36 and 37 because of suey rates and seizures. And I think a lot of it may actually have to do with substance abuse. Uh, so those are my thoughts on autism and aging, as well as how I went from being a college girl who just could not figure out how these people were relating. I felt like an alien to, and I had to work on my monotone via YouTube videos because in the South, I monotone to Yankees. It's not as obvious so those are my general thoughts on autism in life i was punished quite a lot as a child not by my mom for autism behavior you're being sarcastic like someone saying oh hop over here and then you hop over there and they're like go in the hall you're being sarcastic but you just took things literally that's actually something that interferes with my adult life with other grown women my same age peers or, you know, men, it doesn't stop. And I want to say it gets easier. Oh, you learn to love yourself. There's so much self-care, sensory bins everywhere, and which I have one. But being an adult with autism, it's a task. It's a task. And I've got plenty of tips on how to handle it. Anyway, I hope you uh, enjoyed this story time. I hope it wasn't too much of a downer. <laughs> uh, I have some funny stories related to autism, if you would prefer those. But let me know because I want to get back into making content.